All right, what's up guys? So we just posted the 80 grit challenge video with Forrest Kritzer about a week ago. And we had a few questions in there asking about how surface works on a bowling ball. So I thought I would make a quick one minute video explaining exactly how it all works. And my goal with this video is to explain it in a way that a non-bowler can understand. So it's gonna be very simplified and hopefully a lot of you guys can get the bulk of the information out of this video. And just for the ease of explanation, this is a green screen behind me. And just to prove it, I'm gonna fly around really quick and then I'm gonna turn this into a volcano. And there goes that. So that's a green screen, pretty awesome. Anyway, changing your ball's surface is the easiest way to manipulate your ball's reaction. And in my opinion, there's three different ways you can do it. The first way is by changing the ball itself. So you can buy a different ball that has a different cover stock, a different core and have a different ball reaction that way. The second way, you can change the layout of a bowling ball. You can move the way the pin, the CG, and the mass bias are drilled on the ball to manipulate the ball reaction that way as well. The thing is when those two are done, you're kind of out of the water unless you buy another bowling ball. So from there, you can change the ball reaction again by altering the surface of your bowling ball. And that's where we are here. So I think the best way to understand surface of a bowling ball is like a spectrum. So we'll go from zero to say 4,000. It can go higher than 4,000, but just for the sake of this video, we'll go to 4,000. So you have the surface spectrum, zero to 4,000. The lower you go on this spectrum towards zero, the earlier the ball is gonna hook on the lane and the more it's gonna hook overall. If you ever worked with automotive repair or construction of some sort, you probably have some idea of how servicing works. But if you have no idea whatsoever, when you surface something, you're basically putting small scratches into whatever you're servicing. So, the lower the grit that you use, the deeper and thicker the scratches are gonna be. In bowling terms, when you surface your bowling ball, these scratches will actually cut through the oil on the lane. And obviously the thicker and deeper the scratches are, the more it's gonna cut through the oil, the more oil it's gonna soak up, and the more it's going to actually hook on the lane because of that. So really quick, we have a DV8 Diva, Diamond Diva. That one, yeah, that one. Uh, we're gonna throw it with the out of box finish, which is 1500 grit polish. And then after I throw a few shots, we'll see how the reaction is. And we'll put 180 grit on it just to exaggerate a surface and you'll see the difference. So you can see with the out of box finish, the ball goes down the lane very far. It has a nice skid flip reaction. It doesn't look anything too crazy. We'll throw this ball for a few shots so you can get a good idea of what this ball motion looks like. Alright, now we are going to put 180 grit on this bowling ball, 180, you can see on the pad there. And the 180 grit is applied, and let's see how this ball reacts. So as you can see, the ball is hooking way earlier, way more. I basically threw it in the left gutter because of it and the shot wasn't nearly that bad. It was just hooking so much and hooking so early that it just went straight into the gutter.
If you're a typical house bowler, you just bowl in a regular league, there's almost no reason you should ever use 180. I'm only using it in this video for the purpose of demonstration. Please do not put 180 grit on your bowling balls. However, I would recommend using 180 if you're just practicing by yourself and you want to see the difference that surface makes on your bowling ball. Put 180 on it. I, would, I want you to see it in practice. I want you to be able to tell that ball motion with your eyes and watch it with your own two eyes how early it hooks and learn how to see that difference in ball motion. Because I think that'll be a great training tool to actually train yourself to learn how to see the ball motion itself. And that basically sums up everything about how service on a bowling ball works. I hope this helped out some of you guys. If there's anything that still needs clearing up, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll revisit this topic, but I think that should just about explain everything. But yeah, let me know in the comments. So my recommendation to you guys, buy some surface pads, play around with them in practice, and learn how to see that front to back motion with your own eyes. Because you might hear a lot of pros talking about front to back motion. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about how early the ball hooks on the lane. And that's basically the most important thing in bowling today. Thank you to all the guys on the Patreon that are supporting the channel. I appreciate all you guys so much. If you want to support too, the link to that is in the description of this video. Uh, we're going to play a few more shots of this in slow motion because YouTube actually pays you more if the video is longer than 8 minutes. So we're going to extend it a little bit more with some cool slow motion shots. Yeah.